last week you saw me share my porch makeover and my most recent build, the porch bed swing. This is probably one of the most difficult and impressive things that I've ever built, so I'm so excited to share the tutorial with you today. Hey everyone, Melissa from Welcome to the Woods here. I got started with 2x4s that I cut to 81 inches long. I'm using my table saw to measure the depth of the blade and I set the blade to about 5 8 inch height. The reason is because I'm going to be using my table saw to run multiple cuts inside the 2x4 to create a groove for my furring strips to sit in. This is going to be the basis for my bed swing. This is the box that holds all the weight. So I wanted the furring strips to be supported by wood. I made a groove that was about 3 quarter inches wide and like I said 5 8 inches deep. Once my two 2x4s two had grooves cut into them, I started by cutting out pieces of my furring strips to go across and support the mattress. These are basically 1x3s and they're pine. Um, I measured them to a little over 39 and a half inches. And the reason is because I wanted uh, the about a half an inch of extra board to go on top of the 5 8 inch deep grooves I cut, you know, in the 2x4s. They're going to sit inside there. And then I wanted the measurement between the 2x4s to be 38 and a half inches. That's the measurement of my twin mattress. I spaced the 1x3 furring strips evenly across the whole thing. I think I cut 11 of these, so they were about every 6.5 inches. So next I measured uh, the distance that was left down to the 16th of an inch for the 2x4s I was going to cut and complete the box. I cut these 2x4s I think to just over 38.5 inches and then I used my Craig jig to drill pocket holes on each end, two pocket holes on each end. Now the reason I did this is I wanted all of my screws to be hidden and nothing visible from the outside of the bed swing. So these allowed me to drill 45 degree angle screws on the inside to connect these two 2x4s two together, make a box and a joint that's really strong. If you don't have a Craig jig, I definitely recommend getting one. You can look in the description on this video for a link. They are awesome and so really useful. You'll notice my 2x4s do not extend all the way to the end of the, the long 2x4s. And that is because um, the long ones, the 81 inch ones, are sticking out slightly for me to drill holes and hang the rope. So that's intentional that my 81 inch long 2x4s on the sides are longer than the other two. So now once the box and the bed platform was complete, I just shot some brad nails down into each of the 1x3 furring strips to keep them in place from sliding. Next it was time to build the arms. Now I am going for a really modern look with this bed swing and I wanted the arms to look nice and smooth, so I'm choosing to use plywood. I have this 3 quarter inch plywood that was left over from the painted geometric floor design patch that I did on our porch floor. I cut it to the length of the 2x4s plus the 38 and a half inch wide furring strip opening. So that was I think 41 and a half inches, um, maybe a hair over. And then I cut these 2x2 two two strips from a 2x4 that perfectly framed out the piece of plywood. So I'm going to connect these by putting some wood glue and then screwing them together. And I want these in particular to be very strong because I want people to be able to lean all their body weight against the arms. And the arms are also going to be the structure that holds up the backrest of my bed swing. To securely attach the arms to the 2x4 box frame that I built, I'm going to be again drilling pocket screws. This will allow me to hide these on the bottom where the mattress is going to go. And then on the opposite side of the arm, I'm going to drill another 45 degree angle screw the opposite direction. So that will make it very strong because I have screws coming in through the 3 quarter inch plywood as well as screws going into the 2x2 two two frame of the arm in 
all into the box. If you are impressed with my bill design so far, I want to tell you it's totally dreamt up in my head. I didn't use anyone else's plans for this. I just came up with it on my own. So if you can't tell already, I'm pretty proud of it. If you're impressed, it would mean the world to me if you shared this or you subscribed and followed me so that you can see more of my projects and support my channel. Alrighty, let's build the back. I set up a straight edge and ripped some more 3 quarter inch plywood to go along the length of the back. So I'm cutting this to about 74 and a half inches. It's the length of the mattress and it is the exact measurement that I found when I made sure my arms were square with the bed frame box. And then I measured between the two arms. For the kind of super strength that you really can lean back on, I decided to connect two pieces of three quarter inch plywood together. So I use other strips on the back where it didn't matter that I didn't have a piece wide enough and there was a seam. I just glued and screwed that together again. So now my back is an inch and a half thick and I think that this is going to be really sturdy. And then I'm going to use this guide that I made out of tracing a bowl onto a piece of cereal board cardboard and that gives me a perfect curve. Now just a jigsaw cuts that out and I'm actually doing this on the top of the back piece as well as both sides of the arms because I really wanted this modern bed swing to have like soft edges and be very welcoming but still have clean lines. Before I use the jigsaw to curve the edges of my arms though, I'm going to add a very thin, I think it's a quarter inch thick piece of plywood just to cover the back of the arm. Now this is just for looks because I wanted a seamless finish so I'm just brad nailing that into the 2x2. Two two. You'll notice that the 3 quarter inch thick plywood is on the inside and that's because I want to make sure the arms are strong enough for somebody to lean against them. I want to invite you here to come follow me on Instagram because you get to watch the behind the scenes video clips in my stories as I'm creating these projects instead of having to wait to see the finished video reveal. So cutting these curves on the arms was no joke with the jigsaw like this. Uh, I had to come from both sides of the arm because it was so thick with the 3 quarter inch plywood plus the 2x2 two two plus the plywood veneer. Um, the blade on the jigsaw just didn't make it through in one pass. At this point, I was feeling slightly concerned that my bed swing wouldn't be rated for the amount of weight that I was hoping for, which was, no joke, a thousand pounds. So I decided to reinforce the 2x4 box by cutting out um, 45 degree angle pieces that I could put in the corners and really make it sturdy like they do for tables. This really did add a lot of stability, so I just cut some more 2x4 blocks with 45 degree angle sides and I put them in the corners and screwed them into the 2x4 frame. While I had my bed swing on its side, I decided it's time to drill holes for the ropes. So I'm using a spade bit, also known as a paddle bit, in one half an inch and I'm drilling that down. Now whatever ropes you decide to use, that will determine what size hole you need to drill, of course. I try to get my hole as close to the 2x4 uh, connection as possible, that'll be the strongest. And I made sure to drill through the actual meat of the lumber instead of that near that part where I made a groove. Finally I was done building and it was time for finish work. So I'm coming in and I'm applying a lot of wood putty, like a lot a lot. I really wanted the finish to be so smooth on this bed swing. So I used almost an entire tub of this putty. I filled in the edges of all the plywood so that I could sand it completely smooth and I filled in any imperfections on the 2x4 so you would never know it was just pine. Then came six hours of sanding um, in three different grits. I started with a 40 grit, went to an 80 grit, and ended at 120 grit. Then I primed. I used Kills Premium Exterior Primer, which I would definitely recommend. It would work really well. And I just primed the parts on the bed swing, which would be used a lot and would be getting two coats of black paint. My first coat of black paint, I painted the entire thing, just because I'm kind of a perfectionist like that. Even the parts that wouldn't be visible, 
when the bed swing was completely assembled. And then the second coat of paint I just put on the areas that would be showing when everything is put together. For the rope, I bought this 15 foot nylon dock line. It's double braided and it says it's rated for 550 pounds. So I thought this is definitely going to be strong enough but minimalist enough to go with the aesthetic of my bed swing. So I'm measuring now um, at about seven and a half feet and I cut this in half. Now one side of the rope had an eye splice already so it had a loop for me to put onto the hooks that I'm going to put in my ceiling but the other one I needed to create. So whenever you cut nylon you have to burn it to close it up so it doesn't keep fraying. I'm burning both edges and then I'm also folding over one other side to create the splice with these heavy duty clamps that are made specifically for rope. When I tightened this with my socket set it felt super good like it was never going to move so I felt really good about this. When all the paint was dry I used another cardboard cutout just because I had an angle in my head and I wasn't really sure um, how to get it. This is to mount the back piece on my bed swing. So I did this on both sides and then I used my line to put a um, it's actually a stair stringer, so it's a big metal piece at a, full, at a 90 degree angle and it has four holes for screws. Mine I actually cut in half with my angle grinder because if I left it whole, which it was like I think six inches long, um, which makes sense for a stair, but for my application it was just too long and it was going to stick up or uh, down below of the back. So I cut it in half and I installed that. From this point on, the bed swing kind of became a two-person job just because there were so many aspects that were heavy or clunky and um, and I my husband came out to help me. So we held that in place and I got the back put on. The next thing I did was uh, also needed his help. I actually went up into the ceiling rafters or the joists of our porch and I wanted to measure, first of all, where I was going to drill my holes to make sure that my hooks hit a joist but also I wanted to reinforce those ceiling joists to make sure that the weight on those hooks wasn't just putting all the pressure on just two joists. The way I did that was by cutting extra two by sixes that went across three joists at a time and I couldn't make them longer because there was a harsh angle to get up into the attic. I made them as long as I could and that uh, that spanned three joists. So when I drill these two by sixes down into the ceiling joist it will distribute the weight um, from the joist that the bed swing's actually hanging in. I'm saying this so matter of fact, but to be honest, crawling up into the ceiling rafters was horrible. It was so, so hot that day. Like, I think the real fill was like 96 degrees, and I had to wait until 9 p.m. at night to even fathom going up there. I still came out drenched in sweat, completely filthy, and I actually wore a hat to go up in there because I knew there'd be tons of spiders and dirt everywhere. Regardless, I was victorious and so when I was done reinforcing the ceiling joists, I came down and I measured what I needed for my hooks. So I am placing the bed swing a little more than two feet off the front of the porch so that there's walking room in front of it and then a little less than two feet um, from our siding and windows behind the bed swing. Now the way I'm hanging the hooks is actually turned out. So it's not possible for somebody to swing the bed swing too hard and have it come right off the hook because they're turned perpendicular to the bed swing. And it's also not possible for them to swing the bed swing so hard that it hits the house. So I think this is a good tip. Drilling into my newly planked wood porch ceiling was a little bit nerve wracking, but um, the hooks that I'm using they were worth it. They're really big, heavy-duty hooks rated for 290 pounds each. Now, finally, all that was left was to just hang it up. My husband helped me with this too, of course. Uh, the bed swing did end up being fairly heavy. I would say um, it weighed about 80 pounds, so not terrible, but um, it definitely can withstand more weight on it than that because we have had my whole family on it, me, my husband, and the three little kids. And then we also had our whole family plus um, Uncle Tim, my brother, on it. So we've had probably a little over 500 pounds already on the bed swing, and it hasn't had any issues. We haven't even heard any kind of creaking. 
So I feel so confident in how it's built and I cannot be happier with how it turned out. I have spent so much time out here. The best things about the bed swing are the gentle sway. The sway is just perfect. It's so relaxing to be out here on my phone or to have a great conversation with my hubby or to, you know, snuggle with my kids. I just love it. If you love it too, show your support by leaving a comment below or sharing this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this long tutorial and please, if you end up building something like this yourself, you have to join the Welcome to the Woods group. I'll link it in the description. It's the group where my followers share their DIY projects with me and I would love to see if I inspired you to build something from this video. We'll catch you next time on Welcome to the Woods. Thank you.